Hey, good morning. Uh, I just want to take a minute and talk about some dog training. Um, I had an opportunity to speak with a, 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 a trainer yesterday, and we had a great discussion over lunch. And, and we were talking about the, the opposite ends of a spectrum of training. But uh, uh, truthfully, they're not on opposite ends. Uh, they're one and the same. Um, it's just the feeling that is there that, that makes the difference. Uh, let me explain. So what I said is I said you have opposite ends of the spectrum. You have a button pusher on one end that uh, pushes a clicker button and then gives a treat. And the other end of the spectrum, you have someone who pushes a button uh, on an e-collar. And um, uh, his uh, response was, well, aren't they both compulsory? And he's absolutely right. They are both compulsory. Um, uh, the idea <clears throat> is that uh, you set up rules. And um, uh, on one side, a, a dog completes what you're asking it to do, and you give it a treat. Um, and the hope is that it becomes highly compulsory that the, uh, uh, the dog will repeat that behavior. And uh, that's compulsory. That is, that is the definition of, of compulsory, um, that you, uh, uh, it's something that has to be done. So it has to perform the behavior and then gets the reward. And um, in hopes of that becoming a repeated behavior, right? Um, that's compulsory by definition. Well, the other end of that spectrum is uh, someone pushing a button on an e-collar. Uh, and, uh, and I think that they're, again, they're not truly at opposite ends of a spectrum, but they are, I think, in visual aspects um, and perception uh, for most people they are and so this person pushes a button puts pressure on the dog now they don't electrify the dog it doesn't send um, uh, uh, you know electricity through their system and all that uh, that's not how they work um, that we'll save that for another another uh, video but um, they put pressure on the dog uh, the dog performs is compelled to do something and in hopes that it will continue to perform that behavior um, uh, and hopefully in that environment right same as the same as using food it's 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 the it's the same thing and people disagree what that looks like well we got into the to the discussion and one of my personal pet peeves is when people say well we're only going to train using treats we're only going to use positive reinforcement um, we're only going to uh, do this force free but the discussion went into uh, we're actually forcing a dog through compulsion to do the behavior in order to receive the reward. And uh, if a dog is highly food motivated, then what is that truly doing to the dog? It sounds like it's really, really healthy and fun because, hey, we're using food and the dog loves food, but it's actually compulsory um, uh, because we're playing on that dog's desire for food and its enjoyment and its love of that treat. Hmm. The other side again, that's pushing buttons. That's that's popping on a um, on a prong collar, and and it's there. So my biggest problem, I think, in the training world today is when you have someone who says we can do everything in a force-free way. We can just treat it, treat it, treat it, manage it, stay away from problems, um, and we're going to use treats. And the other side says, well, the only way to have reliability is to use an e-collar. Well, what about trainers? Okay, where are the trainers? Uh, where are the dog trainers? Are, is there, has everyone become a button pusher, whether they're pushing a clicker or they're pushing a, an e-collar? Uh, where are the trainers that are supposed to be in that, in that space somewhere in the middle that are communicating with dogs? Okay, if your trainer says every dog that comes into program, if you're going to train with us, you have to have an e-collar on it. You have to have a prong collar on. Um, do they really know how to train dogs? or they just know how to use equipment. Same goes for someone who says, hey, uh, uh, if you're gonna train with us, you're gonna have to wear nothing but a harness, um, you're gonna have to have a bag of treats, and you're gonna need a clicker, and that's all we're gonna do. Well, do they only know how to push a button, or do they know how to train dogs? Um, because every dog is gonna be different. And what is training? Uh, uh, right now, a lot of uh, uh, dog trainers are saying, well, obedience is not that important, okay? and I. I I have to make that argument that obedience is incredibly important because most of us want to take our dogs and do things with them, um, uh, uh, not just around the house, okay? So around the house manners, people coming in the door, not jumping on people, uh, not barking crazy uh, when someone comes to the front door. Um, a recall, even from the yard, from the field, whatever that looks like uh, for your home setup, that's obedience. Uh, leave the squirrel, come back to me when I call you from across the yard.
that's obedience, not knocking down kids, um, going to lay down and settle. That's obedience, um, no matter how you look at it, because you're applying a set of rules that you want the dog to, to you know, conform to uh, when you ask it to do it. So that's obedience. Um, and if you just let the dog, you know, the idea is, oh, let them be happy and let them do their own thing, and then they'll become well-adjusted. Okay, um, over years and years, that's the case. Most people aren't, aren't willing to wait that long. Um, and, and so it's not there. So obedience is important. Uh, for me, I like to take my dogs and go places. If I go to a restaurant, uh, go out to the cafe, and I want to hang out, I want my dog to go lay down, behave, and um, uh, not engage with everyone, not sniff floors, uh, not go try to take food from people. Um, because if it wasn't uh, working in obedience uh, to the idea and the concept of laying down, relaxing, letting me enjoy um, uh, my meal, then it, in a dog's mind, what would it really want to do? Well, if it's a food motivated dog or if it's a play motivated dog, it's going to want to go see everyone and it's going to want some of their food. So don't be fooled by the idea that, hey, you don't need to train obedience because you certainly do. And then you apply those uh, those those things, whether it's a sit, a down, the simplest of things, and you apply that to everyday life. And um, I, I call it the toolbox. It helps you create a toolbox and then I can take my dog and, hey, lay down. Uh, and it can lay down while I, you know, enjoy a meal. And um, uh, then when we get out and walk, there's the stimulus uh, uh, for the dog. It gets to sniff a few things while we're out doing stuff. And um, it gets to enjoy the time with me and um, uh, doing things, we, you know, that I, I've asked it to do and shown it how to do uh, when we go do things. So we can just hang out together. We can spend time together. And that's actually, that is obedience, no matter what anybody tells you. Um, so where is the training in the middle? Where is uh, the dog trainer? Again, if your dog trainer that you, you've been uh, talking with is saying every dog that comes in is going to get a prong and an e-collar, run away from them. If the other one is saying, hey, we're only going to use treats, we're only going to do this, run away from them. Uh, we hear too many horror stories, and I got a phone call the other day, and this kind of got my mind going and, and, and really back on this subject to enough to, and I hate doing videos, so um, enough to put a video out and talk about it. Um, uh, is the, uh, uh, the phone call I got was, was, Hey, Steve, uh, you trained our dog a few years ago. Your team worked with us and we have an amazing dog. However, my sister-in-law has a dog that uh, has gone to a trainer and they have told her that the dog needs to be euthanized. And, um, uh, so I, I did a little research, looked at what kind of training they do and, um, uh, they're button pushers and every dog that comes in gets an e-collar. And uh, because they couldn't resolve the problem with that e-collar, dog needs to be put to sleep. We hear that typically, honestly, we hear that typically with people that are uh, uh, more inclined to, uh, uh, to be um, uh, more positive, purely positive, force-free. We hear that more often with them. Um, and I hear that a lot. But when I heard this one uh, that went to uh, uh, one of the e-collar uh, club, you know, um, branded uh, training programs, um, and then that person said, oh, can't help the dog. That's because they get stuck in that e-collar only. Every dog gets an e-collar when it walks in the door. Every dog gets an e-collar to start the training. That's the only thing they know is push a button, and if that doesn't work, then what happens? The dog gets eliminated. Um, then that's not fair. Again, uh, most of the people that, that, that follow me um, uh, and the people that I follow, they're going to say, oh, that's all because it's force-free, 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 and then they want to euthanize dogs. Well, I'm here to tell you, it's someone else, and this is a branded uh, concept with e-collars. And they've said the same thing. So let's look at what we're doing in training and let's look at uh, actually training dogs instead of pushing buttons on whatever end of the spectrum you're on. And again, it's not a straight line um, uh, because both ends are compulsory work. Um, how about we get back into here, figure out the dog that's in front of us because that's, that's the thing that people keep saying, oh, you have to train the dog that's in front of you because they want to add more aversion. Um, uh, but this dog was trained with an e-collar and still recommended to be put down. Doesn't make any sense. Did they try any of the other methods? Did they try backing off of that somewhere along the line? 
I don't know. But it goes against some of the narrative of everything uh, in force-free is a is, is a problem. Everything in uh, positive uh, uh, training is a problem. It's 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 not one side or the other, guys. Um, it's both ends that say that's the only way that is the problem. Um, and I'll I'll end with this. So I work with a with an outfit up in ca uh, Canada, um, uh, providing service dogs to uh, Canadian veterans, and um, uh, they've employed a trainer up there uh, to work with their with their dogs. And then they've given me some oversight uh, in their program in in the training and development of these dogs. And um, uh, so I spoke with the trainer that they're using, and one of the first things he he says was, uh, uh, you know, well, how do you train? And uh, I said. I work the dog that's in front of me, and um, he says, "Well, uh, do you use treats?" I said, uh, "Of course I use treats. Of course I use you know lots of treats. Um, why would I you know why do you ask?" He goes, "Well, up here we never use treats, and uh, uh, I think that's just the silliest thing ever. Um, doesn't use any uh, any treats, and um, uh, he he made it sound like uh, it was the worst thing on the planet." Uh, to use treats. Well, that's just not true. Uh, why would I not want to uh, use some high value fun reward with the dog um, and uh, build some relationship and a bond with them? Uh, there's nothing wrong with using treats. And uh, I just thought it was kind of comical because we see this all over the place where uh, you either have to choose one side or the other. The truth is, Training is somewhere here in the middle, and um, that's what it looks like to work the dog in front of you, uh, is, to, is to figure out what the best communication method is for that dog to either extinguish bad behaviors, to forge new good behaviors, uh, uh, and, and to do it in a way that's respectful to the dog, in a way that considers the dog, um, and uh, uh, in a way that, that the dog understands you. I mean, because if you don't have communication, you have nothing. And um, uh, when we look at, at owners of dogs uh, in, in the, as lay people uh, who don't understand that communication piece, um, you, you're, you're really spoiling uh, uh, what, uh, what dog training looks like when you pick this or this instead of working here. So anyway, um, uh, consider, uh, considering all things, uh, um, question the trainers that you're talking to and figure out if they're button pushers on one end of the spectrum or the other. And sometimes that works because you land on the right dog. Um, and, uh, it, it can work on this end or this end because you land on the right dog. Um, but for most dogs, uh, they're going to be somewhere in the middle. They have to hear the word. No, uh, they have to understand that uh, there's certain things you can't do. And, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's great reward for doing the things that you do do, uh, that, um, that you're supposed to. So anyway, have a great day training. Uh, thanks for listening to me ramble on. Um, and, uh, let me share with you. Take care.